Hi everyone, I am Venu Gopal from Team Cloudy ML. So welcome back to another amazing podcast. Today we have Shubhayan Roy with us. He is currently working as a healthcare data analyst. He got into data science field without any computer science background. So today we will talk to him and understand how he transitioned into data science. So Roy, welcome to this channel and yeah, Thanks tell us a much. bit about yourself and how you're doing. Yeah, so like it's a little cold here in Kolkata right now. Uh, oh. And I'm doing fine. A uh, lot of work pressure right now. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, so I'm currently working in a company called Applied Research Works Koziva. And right. currently I'm a healthcare data analyst there. Mm-hmm. And we'll do lots of interesting stuff. Uh, we'll talk them, uh, I think we'll go through them a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, for my background, I come uh, from a electronic and telecommunication engineering background. I did my BTEC and passed out in uh, 2018. And right. ever since then, well, I don't know. I never went into data science, but I think data science uh, well got me okay. somehow. <laughs> nice, nice. That good. That is good to hear. Uh, so let me just ask you one of the basic question that most are uh, most of us are very uh, curious about. Like, what made you transition towards data science? Like you said, you were studying electrical, right? Electronics. So what, yeah, electronics. So uh, how? What made you transition towards data science? Well, uh, it's not like I wanted to be a, become a data scientist from the, the first day of college or even the last day of college. Mm-hmm. So, like all my friends were already placed in TCS and all the all sorts of companies, and I was the only one without a placement. And so, what happened oh. was I was trying off campus, and suddenly I got a job from a, a company called WS Global. In Bangalore. Okay. So I had no idea what this company was about. I knew it was a services company. And okay. uh, what happened was that uh, when I went to Bangalore and uh, the person who was in uh, the, the person who was in contact with me, as well as the director uh, there, told me this, uh, learn SQL and come. Okay. Okay. No yeah. other, no other uh, qualifications. And it was an interview. It was a tough one. Okay. Oh. So okay. I was like, um, so when the interview began, I was like, what are going to, what they are going to ask and everything. So the first mm-hmm. round of interview was uh, mathematical. One, I think they asked two questions from uh, SQL, and mm-hmm. a lot of probability and uh, statistics stuff. Okay. So since uh, like I really liked maths and probability and all those things, so mm-hmm. even I uh, was not a very good at SQL at that time. I uh, is the first round to the mathematic parts. But the second round was really tough. A group manager named Puneet, I think so. He was uh, taking my interview and uh, he started asking me all these guesstimate type problems, like how many uh, buildings are there in your city? And I was like, what is this? (laughs) How will I calculate all these things? That is expected, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, like I was a very, I was a fresher, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, luckily, I think he saw something in me, which I didn't see in myself. And uh, I got selected. Mm-hmm. Then I headed cool. to Bangalore. And uh, when I reached there, what I found mm-hmm. was that the, in that company, uh, so mostly there were no, the first thing that I uh, noticed was there were no freshers. So I was mm-hmm. the first fresher there. And uh, the director told me that uh, this is like a new experiment we are doing. We are hiring. Mm-hmm. We are, we are the first pressure that we are hiring, and we are seeing if we can if we can be trained in data. And mm-hmm. uh, likewise, uh, will if you are a successful uh, experiment, okay. we'll try incorporating more uh, freshers okay. in this. So most of the people they are came came in from companies like New Sigma and mm-hmm. uh, all those uh, other big uh, analytics firms that were already there. Yeah. So when I went there, so the project I was handling was Starbucks. Okay. Okay, cool. It, it was yeah. a very, like, I was a very heavy coffee drinker and I really liked the name Starbucks. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, uh, when I would talk to people, I was like, where are you working? And I was like, a Starbucks. I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and cool. uh, yeah. So yeah. what happened was that um, for the past three, four months, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I had a wonderful manager by the name of Siddhant and he 
told me that uh, you're not production ready okay what okay. i want to make you do is uh for okay the, uh, one of the things that i didn't know what what my company was doing okay we had okay. Uh, uh the wns is a vast company and their expertise in are in vast a lot of domains like there's healthcare mm-hmm. there's uh, insurance and this but my our uh department was tickling to analytics okay okay mm-hmm. so well, he said that i'll train you on sql and excel mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. He told yeah. me that those are the bread and butter that you need okay. to learn in order to be good or mm-hmm. do anything in data. Okay. Okay. So for three or four months, I don't know how it is with other people or other companies. Mm-hmm. He was solely focused on my training. He didn't uh, even give. He gave me a little bit of this and that, but mostly I used to go to my office, and okay. uh, he was giving me uh, problems in for SQL, and I was okay. solving those those whole day. and I'll come back and after each month I'll get my salary and I was like wow oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I am getting to learn something and I'm getting salary this is salary. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah he was a very the very cool manager okay so after mm-hmm. three or four five months when I got ready then they explained mm-hmm. me the whole architecture of what was going happen in Starbucks and I was given okay. a charge of Starbucks Brazil at that time so we had various markets mm-hmm. and smaller markets had a one or two member team larger markets had a larger team and all okay. the analytics things were being handled by those uh, people from the different okay. team so i got a, got into starbucks brazil i worked there for mm-hmm. a couple of months then i moved to starbucks asia pacific that's when starbucks was right. coming into india and i saw how the data was getting populated and everything mm-hmm. and then i moved on to a little bit larger team with larger problems that is starbucks uh, england and britain and then the pandemic okay. came and that's how i got into data basically Cool, cool. That's a uh, quite inspiring as such. So many people like have this doubt, like as you faced in the start, like many freshers want to get into data science, but they face a lot of rejections. We could say, or they do not hear from the recruiters. So how did you get your first job? Like, is it via the referral part, or did you kept on applying for the jobs and uh, one day someone up, contacted? Uh, I kept on applying and. Okay. Uh, Uh, WNS was uh, referral, uh, okay. and uh, but the interviews were really hard, and uh, mm-hmm. what I got in through was mathematics. Okay, got it. Because got it. Uh, that's the key. Yeah, and, that's uh, the main part. Yeah. That's even true. if we like, don't know, whenever, any, if we yeah, don't know anything about right. data. If you know a little bit of mathematics, I'll tell you that you can get into data. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Like when we want to get into data science, that's the main part. If we do not know the maths behind everything we can't into get uh, we can't get into data science so that's actually very true yeah so you said you are currently working as healthcare data analyst right and yes. we have seen that uh, you worked as data analyst previously yeah so could you just uh, list out any changes or you could say whether this those both are same or is there any difference between business well, analyst actually and data my analyst? Uh, profile was like a business analyst at okay. first uh, and then i got into health data analyst so uh, like tools are the mm-hmm. same okay 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 still use sql still use a little python still use uh, excel and all such mm-hmm. stuff and tableau uh, okay. bi tools specifically okay. but the way that uh, i am doing the analysis now and how it's impacting that is where the i think the difference is made so when i was a business analyst my sole focus was to optimize the client's uh, needs and spends by giving them proper business decisions that's uh, that was my part here what i'm doing uh, is a little different here the client is giving me the data so the the business part is being handled by someone else uh, okay it. so my job yeah. here is to like uh, analyze data fix their problem data problems and uh, mm-hmm. like basically making a client's life easier and the reason why uh, i'm telling you this is because previously i was in uh, service based company and this is a product based company okay got it so, yeah uh, in a product based company what i'm seeing here is that all the, um, uh, like uh 30 for 40% of the work goes into creating doing the innovation and okay. the rest of the work is like maintaining after doing the innovation maintaining uh that 
uh, smoothness of the uh, work. Like uh, when the tickets are coming in from the client that I, I can't use this, my data is something that's messed up and all that thing. That's where I come in. Okay, the SDGs okay. are handling yeah. the innovation part and uh, yeah. what I'm doing is like doing the cleaning up afterwards. Got it, got it. Okay, that sounds interesting to me, yeah. <laughs> so, according to you, like what are the tech skills and non-tech st- uh, skills that you would suggest for a fresher or a for an experienced person that they should learn before getting into data science or if they want to transition into data science? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Mm, Okay, there was the first thing that I would suggest for any uh, person who is remotely working today, not into data science, not into anything, just working as a laptop in front of them or a computer in front of them is Excel. That's where yeah. everything starts. Okay, yeah. see yeah. the rows and columns, see how data is being populated. Okay, Excel is very, very powerful. Okay, Got it. yeah. And you can do lots of things with it. Uh, I know a lot of algorithms. I know a lot of things, but still I use Excel in most of my thing, uh, jobs. So most of the cases, because uh, mm-hmm. sometimes uh, knowing a lot of algorithms, knowing complex algorithms, it's redundant. It, it, the job doesn't require that. Okay. Yeah. What is required is a simple analysis. And Excel will yeah. do marvelous things with that. The next thing okay. that I would suggest is knowing SQL. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So SQL is like uh, uh, it's like a, the bread and butter when you are uh, lo- going to learn about data. Okay. Got it. So yeah. SQL is like uh, you have a lot lot of uh, um, softwares that have that pro- uh, provide SQL. Like Oracle is there, MySQL is there, the SQL Server is there. Pick up anyone. Mm-hmm. Don't need to uh, look into the commands are the same. Just mm-hmm. little syntax different, but the logic and everything yeah. is the same. And the yeah. most, and every company today, okay, okay. except yeah. like all the companies today are using some kind of a, a database. And unless you know how to harness that data using a database or using SQL, you will get nowhere. Okay. So, yeah. and, uh, and people are thinking, well, I know SQL, I know Select Star. Okay, but Select yeah. Star is yeah. not not the end of SQL, okay. It's, yeah. uh, SQL can be very challenging and very interesting yeah. if you uh, understand how to build query and uh, yes. And uh, when we are writing queries that are, that are uh, 300 lines, 400 lines long, okay. Yeah. So that it, it gets a lot of challenging, okay. So yeah. please, don't, please don't limit yourself to select star, I would say. Okay. Dive deeper, there are a number of books in SQL that can teach you. I'll say I can mm-hmm. suggest a few of them. You can pick it up. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next thing I'll say is that after you learned a little bit, uh, a mm-hmm. lot of Excel, a lot of SQL. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, then go for a programming language. Got it. Okay. Yeah. You can choose yeah. R or Python or Scala, whatever you want. Okay. Mm-hmm. Most yeah. people are going to Python these days. And it's a high yeah. Okay. yeah, that's true. <laughs> So yeah, yeah Python true. is very, uh, very, very um, good for certain aspects of data science, and it has a lot of library built-in libraries. Yeah, which really makes our jobs a lot easier. So, yeah. don't just limit yourself to like uh, I am doing data science. So, like uh, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn is my. Yeah. Seaborn, I learned this for libraries, and I'm a, I'm done. Okay, but uh, yeah. to truly uh, do data science and write good Python scripts and algorithms and all those things, you yeah. really need to understand the whole of the uh, whole the whole subject. Okay, I'm not going yeah. to go uh, telling you to go and write some source code and uh, make an API and all that thing. But yeah, yeah, you need to cover something like generators and. Uh, functions oops and all those things learn it take a little time take us uh, oh. one year time take six months take eight months don't cover it in one month uh, yeah there are a number of books in the market there are a number of uh, free and paid courses in mm-hmm. all sorts of yeah. uh, uh, platforms yeah uh, if you're not willing to pay very good for you sometimes mm-hmm. the free source free, free sources are even better Okay. Yeah. I'll yeah. I'll list out a few uh, if you uh, may if you may ask me later. Okay. From yeah, where yeah, I, yeah, sure. From where I learned. Okay. Uh, sure, sure, sure. 
and uh, after you have learned python mm-hmm. uh, that's the correct time mm-hmm. to go into uh, machine learning okay But, yeah yeah so either you can do one thing if okay. you don't want to be a like a hardcore data scientist from the beginning or if you want to try something else go and learn something like called be like a bi tool okay okay yeah and that gives you four that gives you exactly four uh, tools to, <coughs> excuse me that gives yeah, you exactly no four uh, tools under your toolbox right go and learn yeah. something like tableau or uh, power bi and something like that and mm. it'll, it'll easily get into something like a data analyst or a business bi analyst role okay yeah. now if you want to handle uh, handle data science to be exact uh, mm-hmm. then start learning algorithms start with the simple ones start a linear okay. regression start a logistic regression and okay. once you learn them you'll see a lot of math involved in them start learning, yeah. start understanding maths and one thing that i think to uh, tell you about is the statistics part okay yeah. probability and statistics is very important when you're learning yeah. this algorithm so okay uh, get a um, do a statistics 101 101 course go the yeah. do a probability 101 course and then like after doing statistics and probability you'll understand a lot of this uh, concepts are much much more clear because sometimes yeah. like when you are pushed into lots of mathematics and you're like feeling a fish out of the water and you'll like probably mm. have something like uh, you'll sometimes like feel like well this is not for me yeah that's true. Like, uh, anyone can learn it but you just need to give the patience and the time to do it so you can yeah. learn a few algorithms learn uh, like uh, 10 or 6 algorithms that are very much used okay yeah. and if you want to if you go into a job that requires data science you'll mm-hmm. see that uh, mostly these four or five algorithms are used got it thank yeah. you percent of the time so you won't need to do fancy algorithms and uh, fancy uh, things like that a uh, normal data science job is much more simple than uh, what people think it to be okay. got it yeah but uh, the thing is that if you are trying to uh, do something if you are trying to do data science you have to play yeah. with data okay And yeah that's where all the little that's where people get a little like discouraged because uh, like algorithms writing algorithms is very fancy you just import scikit learn and write it like in two lines yeah. or three lines okay yeah that's true yeah so um, but the thing is that if your data is uh, screwed up you can't even if you write yeah. the most perfect algorithm it's like garbage in and garbage out right yeah you'll still get uh, very bad results so that's understanding true. your data and eda is a very it is for like exploratory data analysis is a very very important step uh, step for okay. any for for data uh, doing data science and uh, it is what that takes the maximum amount of time if you understand it. the data yeah. do your uh, do your visualizations understand the skewness and everything uh, okay. and see the linearity and everything and all that after that you know what algorithm to use okay that like yeah. it comes to you and you just apply it and if it's not doesn't give you uh, use another one it doesn't take a lot of time but understanding the data that takes a lot of lot of time got it got it that that was really good advice actually uh, many people forgot to study the basics first rather they directly dive into the algorithmic part but yeah. they actually miss out what is analysis part that is the main thing if the input is not good the output won't be good so yeah. that was really good advice so yeah so that was like the technical aspects of everything uh, is there any non tech aspects that you want to tell uh, the students or anybody who is trying no. to uh, get into data science no. yeah so first of all when you're in a job okay yeah is uh, not like a cake carol competition okay you're not handed out data sets and you're yeah. you're not uh, told to perform get the uh, best accuracy and all those parameters yeah. that you are judged on you'll yeah. be given a business problem okay exactly yeah now what you have to think about is at first that well what is the business need of this okay yeah ask as many questions to the stakeholders as possible why do i need this what what data will i use what should i do 
Okay, here soft skills comes into a very much uh, uh, limelight. Okay, and after you have like made a model and uh, made some sense of the data, okay, and yeah. you want to tell that well, if I do this or if you do this, so you're suggesting some kind of decision making that might mm-hmm. help uh, the company. So yeah. the person, who, the stakeholder that you are presenting this is most probably doesn't know a lot of algorithms. You can't go in and tell, well, this is the normal equation and uh, these are the variables that I took and this is a matrix multiplication and all those things. He'll yeah. throw that, throw a desk at your face. Okay. Yeah. So you, <laughs> you have to uh, make him understand in a language that yeah. doesn't require that mathematics. We have to okay. make good charts, good uh, visualization. We actually visualization is very much key in this uh, yeah. subject. Okay. Mm-hmm. And explanation. Explanation in clean, lucid terms. Okay. It's yeah. as if you're explaining it to a five-year-old and he can yeah. be making him or her understand it. Understood. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That, that sums up really well, actually. So you, you just... I have not told like we should focus on the technical part itself. Rather, whatever we are doing, it should be explained in a very like very a good way. Like uh, it should be very understandable. So that's what you yes. were trying to say, I guess. Yeah. Yes. So that can be supported with a lot of visualizations as well. So that really sums up very well. Uh, yeah. So that was about the technical and non-technical skills part. So. One more interesting question that everybody has, like even the freshers or if anybody is trying to transition to data science, that is uh, the CTC part. Like as a fresher, how much a person can expect? expect? Like, can you give us a range or if possible for you, uh, could you tell us your first uh, package if it's possible? Yeah. Uh, so when I joined yeah. as a business analyst, uh, I didn't get a, get a lot of money. Okay. Cool. My CTC was around uh, four lakh twenty, and I, because yeah. like mm, uh, I was naive at that time, and uh, my friends were making T in TCS three lakhs so or three point six yeah. lakhs, and I was very happy. Uh, wait, see, yeah. uh, I am getting more than you. But yeah, yeah. the thing is that uh, as the demand of the market grows, and and as more and people, more companies are hiring data scientists uh, or data analysts for, for that say uh, uh, you can uh, definitely make a lot of money as a fresher or as a um, experienced person but yes you have to show that portfolio Got it. okay yeah yeah you have to show your projects you have to make the person who is interviewing you to think that yes that he can uh, do something that others might not. You have to think out of the box. You have to uh, make a good portfolio. Resume is very much uh, comes yeah. into factor, and you have to back up that resume with the things you're telling. You yeah. you, you, uh, you just uh, download uh, uh, or copy a code from like Hugging Face with ten transformer yeah. architecture and yeah. uh, write it on a CV. And uh, when you're yeah. being asked what is a transformer, you're like sitting in blank, and that doesn't work. Okay, That's, do yeah. what you can. And uh, like, I'm not saying that you have to do a DOS of a lot of work. Two to three projects is enough. Yeah, got okay. it. But yeah. whatever you do, uh, understand it 100% and you should be able to make, make the other person understand what you have done. Got it. And yeah. uh, if um, so, a lot of my companies that are coming in are paying really high uh, salaries to freshers in this field. It's not like that um, I got 4.2 and you'll also get 4.2. You can get anything between yeah. 8 to 12 to 13, 15. Um, some companies have been paying even more. Got it, got it. Yeah, so I think that really portrays the CTC range, I guess. I think many yeah. will be clear with that. So as we were talking about the portfolio part, resume part and portfolio yeah. building part. So this is one of the common questions. Like uh, you were in a non-tech background like non-CS background I could say and so how did you build up your portfolio like what projects did you work on or how did you prepare for your interviews so could you just so, a brief as I about said that? for my first yeah. job I was not really under uh, I didn't know I would become a data analyst so what I only had was like I did some projects in uh, C++ and all those 
okay and i did some uh, electronics things electronics things okay. and all that so after okay. i uh, started working and that's the time when i started building my portfolio i was doing projects on my own i was doing projects for the company okay mm-hmm. as lo- and uh, and uh, as long as things you make things interesting i think uh, uh, yeah. your portfolio can be really really uh, good and uh, then uh, for uh, data science new freshers and people who are or people who are trying to get into data science please don't pick up the titanic or the idis data set like people have done those like a billion times okay that's true yeah try something new there are hundreds of new data sets in kaggle or even better you can create a new data set for yourself and then try doing it web scraping and all those things have come in beautiful soup and all those uh, you can yeah if you create your own data set and uh, uh, do some analysis on that i think that's makes it even better got it got it that's that's really true like whenever a fresher enters into data science they always pick up the common data set and they build some project around it and they put that in their portfolio and they think that's a nice one but yeah that's really true that that shouldn't be done so that really uh, that's a good suggestion actually so yeah one last question i would like to ask like what is your advice for freshers from non tech background that are trying to transition to data science field or any of the freshers that are trying to transition to data science okay it's a tough one okay yeah so i would suggest that if you are really thinking of going into data science okay you must prepare yourself like you must prepare yourself for the math okay mm-hmm. because yeah sometimes it can be very unforgiving you like you will be deep down in the water and then you see that lots of math problems are come things are coming at you and you will try to run so understand that well this is a field that requires a lot of math and uh, and also if you think that uh, from a non technical uh, people that uh, well you can skip things like coding and all uh, this is not true you have to code okay got it yeah. and um, i have seen people from non technical grounds code even better than some technical people so it's not very really hard to learn yeah okay yeah yeah okay and uh, it's not very really hard to learn just put in a little more effort into that and uh, one of the things i would like to tell to a fresher is that uh, never stop learning okay even if you have got a data science job i think that you have won the race okay there is something out there that even better okay like for yeah. example uh, today i am uh, um, doing work here but my plans doesn't end here right i i want yeah. to learn even something more and probably go for, um, to some higher studies small those things okay but, and um, yeah so or maybe after two or three years i want to transition into uh, a large um, um, for a company or something like that okay yeah. and uh, so don't st- ever stop learning and mm-hmm. don't think uh, that you have mastered uh, two three algorithms that makes you a little very well well known data scientist okay the word is like the everyday new things are being uh, coming up yeah. okay in this field and uh, you'll be very much left behind if you think that uh, you have saturated yourself with the knowledge got it got it thank thanks thank you for that advice uh, roy that I, i think that will help a lot of freshers and yeah thank you for uh, sharing your story with us it was really uh, like inspiring for all of us so thanks a lot for joining us thank you guys for watching and please do subscribe our channel and let's meet in some other video till then keep learning keep hustling thank you thank you